Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Cisco Systems, with support from NetApp. And now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in San Francisco for Oracle Open World 2014, this is theCUBE. We go out to the events, extract the city from the noise. We're live on the floor inside the Cisco booth. We also have another CUBE broadcasting live as well. Double, double the trouble, Jeff Frick, my co-host here inside the CUBE. I'm John Furrier, co-host. Our next guest is Raghunath Nambiar, distinguished engineer, data center business group at Cisco. Welcome back to the CUBE. Great to see you again. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, this is uh, pretty exciting. Uh, hear that you know, 40,000 plus attendees in San Francisco this week. Yeah. But, and Oracle, uh, Oracle is touting benchmarks. I, I love Larry Ellison, Jeff, when he gets on stage. We are the fastest. <laughs> like, he's just it's like, he's always like, whether they're the fastest well, they or not. they got the big ship out front, well, John. Well, we, whether they, they whether the they're the fastest or not, we don't want to, but he's also put up, they always find a benchmark for him. But the reality is, is that people do care about benchmarks. And we want to jump into that on the um, industry standard benchmarks around big data. Mm -hmm. What are you guys reporting uh, with Cisco? What's some of the numbers you have? So, um, if you look at uh, the benchmark landscape, okay, we have uh, mature benchmarks for uh, system performance from the, trans the, the spec organization and the database performance like a TPCC, TPCH uh, from the Transaction Processing uh, Performance Council. I mean, benchmark is uh, pretty important for uh, the vendors and the customers, uh, you know, and also for the engineering organization. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, you know, two things. One is, uh, if you look at uh, UCF, right, last, uh, you know, five years, uh, we have done extremely well in the marketplace. So one of the thing, uh, you know, what we, that we are able to demonstrate in the in the industry is the leadership of Cisco UCS with the 95 plus you know industry standard benchmark records. I mean that is on the system performance side and you know database performance side. So now. You know, everybody talks about uh, you know big data. It is uh, you know becoming a pretty major part of uh, enterprise IT ecosystem across uh, all the major verticals. When you talk about Hadoop and NoSQL, it is pretty exciting from a you know technology innovation perspective. But uh, several of our customers are challenged with uh, how do you size your uh, 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 infrastructure, uh, you know, for your uh, application or Hadoop benchmark. What is the right uh, uh, configuration in terms of performance, uh, price performance, uh, energy efficiency? So the TPC has recently announced uh, announced a um, industry standard benchmark uh, for benchmarking big data systems. I would say this is the first industry standard benchmark for uh, benchmarking uh, big data systems. With this, you'll be able to compare performance, price performance, and energy efficiency of uh, various platforms in a general neutral way. Okay, I mean, there is no publications yet. I mean, we expect uh, in a few publications uh, coming up, uh, you, know, uh, you know, this year. So talk about the interaction with Oracle, because obviously, you know, you guys have a lot of benchmarks, certainly on the Cisco side, different environments, but specifically for Oracle, mm -hmm. what were some of the considerations you guys have found that customer scenarios would be most likely the use case for? I mean, industry benchmarks are great, because sure. it's good, mm -hmm. good proxy, mm -hmm. but how does that translate to Oracle interactions with the, with okay, the customers so, you see? Yeah, if you look at uh, you know, today's uh, enterprise application ecosystem, okay, I would put the applications in, uh, I mean, three, three buckets. One is uh, you know, the traditional kind of transaction processing and uh, enterprise data warehousing. Okay, uh, you know, UCS, uh, you know, VCDs and CCDs are ideal uh, platform uh, for those. So we have demonstrated that uh, using uh, several benchmarks, you know, uh, the, the TPCC benchmark, uh, TPCH benchmark, uh, and uh, two e-business suite benchmark that we published this week, uh, you know, claiming a uh, uh, number one um, uh, record. So that is on the traditional uh, application uh, 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 space. Then you have this, uh, emerging uh, big data space, uh, you know, uh, where Hadoop and uh, NoSQL distributions uh, uh, play a very important role. From a UCS perspective, you know, um, we provide the best platform 
for enterprise application IT, where you have traditional applications and emerging big data applications coexist and complement each other. So I want to add one more thing. Traditional big data, and there is another category of you know, uh, analytics or computing at the edge, like uh, you know, uh, internet of things. So we have announced uh, uh, our uh, new generation platform for uh, you know, Internet of Things, Internet of Things gateways, and uh, you know, processing at the edge uh, with our UCS Mini platform. It's basically a uh, six RU uh, form factor uh, blade chassis in which you have a compute, uh, connectivity, and storage all in. So, and and uh, and uh, you know, it's primarily for as I said, the Internet gateways and branch offices, but it can be managed centrally with the UCS manager. Interesting of those three, two of them are relatively new, right? That's the correct, big data yeah. space as well as the Internet of, of Things space. The other thing we hear a lot about is really the data center transformation driven by power. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times power is the biggest gate to data center expansion sure. at a particular location. So talk about how the power landscape is really changing in the evolution of the data center, um, and how benchmarking is impacting that. And then the other thing we hear too now is about different densities within the data center mm -hmm. based on the mm -hmm. workload. How does that factor in? Sure, I mean, um, you know, energy efficiency is a top consideration uh, for uh, you know every IT manager. If you look at the, our uh, you know UCS portfolio, uh, we have a significantly improved uh, on energy efficiency. Okay, if you look at uh, 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 our previous platform versus uh, the current platform, one of the considerations is uh, you know 30 to 40 percent performance improvement at the same power footprint. That has been you know uh, something that we have made sure that our, our new platforms uh, deliver. And on a benchmarking side, there are uh, several uh, industry standard uh, you know, benchmarks for power. One is uh, uh, spec uh, uh, power, very popular benchmark. And uh, you know, if you look at the TPC benchmarks, <coughs> energy efficiency is one of the components that uh, you know, vendors can report part of their uh, benchmark uh, publications. So talk about the, uh, the show here. What's your take of Oracle 14? I mean, more buzz this year? I mean, every year it kind of has its own vibe. Four years ago, it was like, dead, quiet, everyone's like, what's Oracle going to do? And then all of a sudden, within a year, they just changed the game. A lot more engineered systems, <laughs> the Sun acquisition came into play, you start to saw a more geeky hardware piece, a lot more developers. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, another exciting, uh, you know, Oracle open world. Uh, on a, let, me, let me look at this in a two, two different perspective. One is on the application, okay, application perspective. So, a lot of applications are uh, moving on the cloud. Uh, Oracle made some announcements uh, last night about their commitment uh, to cloud. I think this is very much in line with, uh, you know, uh, the, the announcement we have uh, made like six months ago about our private cloud strategy, public cloud strategy, and inter-cloud strategy, so where you can run your application in your data center, in your public cloud, or a, or a, or a, or a, or a, uh, like a, like a private cloud, in a, in a, uh, in a comprehensive way, you can manage your application. And you can move up applications uh, from your private cloud uh, to public cloud, or public cloud uh, to private cloud. And uh, you know, I need to understand a bit more on the Oracle announcement. One of the things that uh, interesting, uh, you know, came to me is uh, their ability to run uh, like Oracle database in a multi-tenant environment. Uh, you know, uh, I think that would be the most exciting uh, uh, from a software perspective, Oracle's perspective, uh, in this announcement. And I also see like a lot of companies, uh, you know, on the storage pipe, storage space. Uh, made uh, significant improvements uh, you know, on performance, uh, especially with the flash uh, storage. Uh, so we have uh, done the same thing with uh, our own uh, flash solution as well as uh, you know, flash solution in partnership with uh, our storage uh, vendors. So what are some of the next big hurdles to cross to increase those benchmarks inside the data center? What are the stuff when you're looking down the road? You're, you're thinking a few steps ahead of most people in the game. You know, on a, on a benchmark in particular, yes, I mean, we want to, we, we are, uh, we, we want to stay ahead of uh, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our competition so that we can deliver the best to our customers, uh, you know, and, and as soon as, you know, we can. Um, uh, you know, 
the two things. One is uh, on the compute compute density. Okay, so we have uh, the, the the capability to take a full advantage of um, Intel processor family. You know, if you look at uh, processor performance, it has been uh, going in line with the Moore's law. So to complement that, uh, so we have uh, increased our memory put footprint on the on our server platforms. If you look at our uh, B460 and C460, these two systems are uh, very popular machines in the, in the in the database space, as we for Oracle. We support up to six terabyte of uh, main memory with the capability to uh, support uh, you know 15 gigabytes per second IO bandwidth. This is going to be uh, you know kind of a, the next uh, generation machines uh, for uh, not only for uh, your customer deployment but uh, to, to, to to demonstrate you know the performance uh, uh, scalability and the price performance uh, you know, uh, capabilities of Oracle and other uh, database management systems. So, so you touched on it. Talk a little bit about Flash and the impact of Flash that you guys are seeing as it propagates further and further inside the data center beyond just the super high value, low latency applications. Sure, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you look at uh, uh, you know enterprise, Flash is uh, uh, pretty much becoming a standard, especially for uh, transaction processing, transactional databases. The, 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 the advantage comes from two things. One is performance. Okay, if you look at the IOPS, IOPS per second, you know, capability, uh, the flash technology can deliver thousand to ten ten thousand times more IOPS per second than uh, 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 spinning media. And uh, on a, the, the, on the energy efficiency side, it is one tenth or like one twentieth. So, I mean, if you look at five years from now, I would say 75% of all the, you know, transactional and real-time database uh, will be uh, running on Flash. And of course, uh, you know, uh, if the capacity is important, like uh, you want to build a petabyte uh, 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 scale uh, 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 database, you know, uh, where Hadoop and uh, NoSQL distributions, uh, you know, have a, important play. I think uh, the spinning media is going to be more effective in terms of dollar per terabyte. But uh, overall, you know, Flash is uh, going to be the future of so, storage. So Larry was talking on this keynote about big data, and he basically throws it out there like, it's included. <laughs> it's, under, it's included, you can't ignore it, was his direct quote, which I was so like happy, but also rolling in laughter because of course it's included. Big data is everywhere now. It's part of the platform of everything. Um, but Oracle tries to compartmentalize it like, oh, that's the solution. Um, how do you guys look at how you guys are building out the, the big data piece of it? Because big data is a big part of, of the analytics involved in the software for the networking stuff, but also the apps need the data. So how do you sort out that big data piece relative to the Oracle ecosystem? Sure. I mean. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, Oracle is uh, you know, primarily solving uh, your traditional uh, 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 a transactional or data management problem. Okay, the one of the innovations that uh, Oracle has done is ability to query, okay, your data set uh, outside Oracle database residing on uh, on on a Hadoop. So treating uh, 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 your data on Hadoop as part of your database table. Okay, so so not only you have access to you know the database data inside your database, but also having access to um, the data that is residing on uh, uh, um, Oracle database or other NoSQL distributions is very powerful. And the Exolytics, how do you think that's going to fit into the whole product issues around customer choice? Sure, yeah. I mean, Exolytics is a high-performance uh, analytic solution, okay, um, for uh, in-memory processing. Uh, you know, as I mentioned uh, before, I mean, uh, large memory is uh, one one of the areas uh, that uh, we are focusing on a uh, infrastructure perspective. Uh, you know, our uh, B460 and uh, C460 supports up to six terabyte of memory, and the new generation of uh, C220 and C240 and B200 platforms, two socket uh, systems powered by Intel E2600 CPUs, we support up to 1.2 terabyte of memory. So on an infrastructure perspective, we are uh, fully uh, in line with uh, 
uh, uh, uh, taking full advantage of, of like uh, you know technologies coming from Oracle. So you recently joined the chair as chairman of the Big Data Benchmark Standards Committee. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and also being at Cisco, you're covering the data center, I want to take the perspective of looking at why benchmarks exist to share data mm -hmm. with uh, potential performance issues and, and environments that most CIOs or enterprises have. So in your opinion, what, in your expert opinion, what do you think the biggest driver is in the data center right now for folks out there who are looking at it and realizing that they got to move to the cloud, mm -hmm. they realize there's some transformation going on, in your opinion, what are the big critical things for the transformation, the data center to the cloud? I, th I think the main uh, challenge is uh, your ability to move data back and forth, okay, uh, while meeting all the uh, uh, all the security, privacy, and the compliance requirement, uh, and uh, and uh, you know there are a lot of uh, things happening in the industry to uh, uh, solve that problem. And one of the major initiatives is our intercloud offer, the, the, the ability to provide end-to-end -end isolation for your application when you send data or application between your, you know, your data center to uh, another public or private cloud. So the question I always get, and I'll ask you because you're the expert chairman on the benchmarking committee is, how do you make a benchmark that's going to be, um, that satisfies all the different audiences and use cases? Um, because it's hard, and you can't always get every use case, mm -hmm. but you try to figure out a benchmark that's representative of what the environment's doing. Sure. So mm -hmm. how do you guys wrestle with that? So, um, you know, in, if you look at the industry standard committees like uh, SPEC or TPC, so pretty much all the major vendors are uh, represented in the committee, so all the decisions are uh, uh, taken through a democratic uh, process. Okay, uh, you know, the recent... Uh, a democratic process by the vendors. <laughs> Sorry? By the vendors who yeah. want the benchmarks to be in their favor. So, I mean... If or you, not, is that true? Of course, I mean, like, if, you, if you're representing yeah. yourself in industry standard consortia, you wear two hats. One is uh, representing your company. Yeah, of course. Okay? The second hat is, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, your industry standard hat so that uh, when you develop a benchmark, it is vendor neutral, so that uh, your end user customer can compare uh, different architectures, different topologies, so that is the end goal. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, what we have, if you, what we have seen historically is that you know, industry standard benchmarks enable healthy competition. Yeah, okay, that and is, conversations too. Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, that debate. <laughs> debate, sure, yeah, yeah. Debate's healthy. Yeah. At, at, at the end of the day, our, Customers are going to get uh, the most benefit because when there is competition, the performance will go up, price performance will go down, so uh, benefiting uh, the customers. Yeah, yeah, and, but you know, the, the key is getting some signal out there that says, okay, here's how generally things look mm -hmm. with data to give some navigation to. Yeah, and another thing is, uh, you know, the benchmarks define a level playing field. Okay, so that, uh, you know, uh, architecture X can be compared with architecture Y. Product A com can be compared with uh, product uh, B in a vendor neutral manner. So, I mean, th I mean that, uh, that's the key. That's the key. So I want to sh shift gears a little bit. I don't know if they let you out of the lab and go out to talk to customers, but I'd love to hear your perspective on some things that you've seen recently where people are putting all this power to work in ways that they couldn't do it before. Do you have any good good stories from the field? Sure, I mean, uh, uh, and I, I interact with our customers, our top customers all the time. Oh, good. Uh, you know, uh, let me give you a good example, okay? Uh, I have been um, uh, uh, involved in a uh, research paper. I have two interns uh, working on uh, looking at uh, the big data in the healthcare sector. Okay. So one of the amazing things was, uh, you know, uh, HGP, the human, human Genome Project. Right. That is one thing that has uh, 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 outperformed more slow. Uh, if you look at the, the scale of that thing is huge, right? Scale of the, yeah, scale Give of us some at, numbers that, yeah, that kind I of mean, map uh, out the scale of what the. Human if if you look at the 15 years ago, uh, the cost for uh, gen genome sequencing for a fraction of a DNA, I think uh, the, the metric that they use is uh, Centi Morgan. To process that uh, would. Uh, costed uh, something like $10,000 uh, in 2001. 
Now it is in less than 10 cents. Okay. So if you look at the uh, plot that against Moore's law, it is significantly beating Moore's law. <laughs> I mean that is one. I mean, I mean the great potential of uh, like you know big data and the genomics combined in right. the healthcare space, especially for uh, you know personalized uh, medicine. You know uh, that can uh, significantly change the healthcare industry. So we can all live longer. 50, 100 years more? Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> Two years more. <laughs> okay, I'll get you the final word on this segment. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Share with the folks out there um, if they were going to ask you, what's the big deal this year at Oracle? What's the big technical focus at the so, show? I, I think uh, what I've heard so far, the main focus is uh, uh, a database in a cloud, or database as a service, uh, you know, in a, in a multi-tenant environment with uh, you know, all the necessary uh, 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 isolation and uh, you know, security and uh, privacy challenging addressed. And security. Okay, we are here live in theCUBE. This is the Cisco booth, this is theCUBE, where we are broadcasting for two straight days. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.